You know, the Lord didn't tell us to read the Bible. He didn't say to read the Bible. In 2 Timothy 2.15, he says, Study. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divideth the word of truth. The reason that so many people get misled is because we don't study the Word of God. That's why a lot of people are misled. They don't study the Word of God. Instead, we let a preacher do all the studying for us. And guess what? We've got our faith in Him. You hear me? We don't do the studying. We let man do the studying. So if we let man do the studying, we go by Him. Where is our faith? If you think about it, where is your faith? That's why many people get trapped in cults. Because they don't study. We're too lazy to study. We don't have enough time. Psalms 118.8 The Lord says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in a man. This is the word of God. You're not following me in here. You're not following me. I know y'all's faith is not in me. Together... We're studying the Bible. I just get it before y'all. That doesn't make me better or more knowledgeable or anything. Well, I'm, I'm studying. I'm getting it before y'all. But then we, we get it together. And that's the way it should be. We're here to study the scriptures. To learn from the Lord. The scriptures. Not from me. We have preachers and teachers who come to you with what the Bible says. But a lot of times they add to it. Or they come to you with their teachings, but they've got in it from, they got what they're teaching from another book, from another man's book, a book written by another man. We have a lot of teachers that way. We need to study so we can tell when this teacher is either giving a commentary from another man or if he's adding to the Word of God. And the only way we can do that is by studying ourselves. We got to study it ourselves. Catholics, Baptists, and many others, we're so proud of being our religion. A lot of people are proud because they're Baptists. A lot of people are proud because they're Catholic. Or whatever the religion is, they're proud to be that religion. You're picking a, a religion that is run by man. It's run by man. Catholic is run by man. Baptist is run by man. Pentecost. All these other religions are run by man. And they've been a part of your life since you probably was a kid. You was raised in whatever religion it was, right? So that's what you believe in. That's that's your faith is in that religion. We need to we need to get away from religion and just study the word of God. Period. If you belong to a church that has some type of cult Traditions, which we're going to learn what they are, then you, we need to make up our mind. Okay, am I going to follow what I've been all my life since I was, since I was raised? You know, a lot of us we belong to churches we need to get out of. Now, some of us belong to churches we it's okay to stay in, but as we do, as I do this teaching, what we should participate in and what we shouldn't when they're doing whatever it is. This is what this teaching is going to be on. Because we have cults, they're just plain cults. They're not of God, they have nothing to do with God. They have their own belief and their own little G God. But then we have religions that believe in God, they believe in Jesus, they believe in the Trinity, they believe He died on the cross, but still we need to watch out for them also. Because the cultic ways are sneaking into our churches of God today. They have been, they've been doing it. But it's getting worse and worse. And it's doing it so slightly. People are not recognizing it. It's not just one big bang, all of a sudden we're doing this. No, it's coming, it's sneaking into the church little by little, little by little, little by little. And we're not even noticing it. Now, these are the scriptures I'm going to use to show you what I do to teach or to preach the word. In Galatians chapter 1, verses 10 through 12, it says, I'm going to read this out of the Living Bible. Obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. Now, do we have churches today that the pastor's up there trying to, to please man? And why? Because of the tithe. The happier you make the, the members, 
the more you're going to get on the tithe. Paul says, obviously, I'm not trying to win approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. Dear brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that the gospel message I preach is not based on mere human reasoning. I received my message from no human source, and no one taught me. Instead, I receive it by the direct revelation from Jesus Christ. This is what Paul is saying. Not from no human source, like college, seminaries. He got it straight from the Lord. It doesn't say anything about going to college here. Paul didn't say he didn't say anything about going to school. First Corinthians chapter nine, verses eighteen and nineteen. What is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all. That I might gain the more. Paul saying. I'm not getting paid for this. I'm not doing this for money. Yes. There's a lot of guys out there. Who are doing it for money. We have a lot of pastors. Preachers out there. Who are in it for the money. They're in it for the popularity. For they're in it for the power. They make tapes. Or CDs. Or write books. You think it's just because they love you. And they want you to hear these things. If, if it was that way then they would give these tapes, CDs, books. They would give them away. They wouldn't be selling them if they really wanted you to know. Do you hear me? If they really wanted you to know, they wouldn't be selling it. And if it's from God, the Lord will give them the money to, write, to have the materials to write these books or make CDs. He will get supply them what they need to do these things if it's from the Lord. Paul says he's doing it because it's the privilege. It's a privilege that the Lord has given to him to speak his words, to speak God's words. And he says that I that I abuse not my power in the gospel. It means what it said. What he's meaning there is what Second Peter one twenty says. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. It's saying it right here. The scriptures aren't up for private interpretation. And that's why Paul said, I abuse not my power to preach the word. I'm not abusing it by giving what I think it means. That's what he's saying here. That's what he's saying he's right here. I'm not giving you the gospel on my opinion. Because Second Peter says, the scriptures are not up for private interpretation. Paul gets everything that he says, he gets it from the Holy Spirit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4. But as we all, as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. The Lord has trusted us to teach his words. That's what he's saying. He's trusted us to teach his words, not to satisfy the people who hear it, but the Lord. Satisfying the, the Lord by teaching or preaching what he says. Not what we think he says. And he says the Lord will test our hearts by what motives we do teach. Do we give our opinion? Do we do it for money? That's what he said. And he tried out our hearts. Why are you doing Why are you preaching the word? Are you doing it for money? Are you doing it just so you, you can give your opinion? So people can look at you like, man, you know. And they don't. When the men of God speak truth. Of his words, you have two ways of accepting it. Luke chapter 4, verse 28 and 29. And all day in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with... Now we're talking about Jesus here. Jesus was, was preaching here. And all day in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and, and led him unto the brow of the hill, whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. Now that's one way people take the word of the, of the Lord. They want to kill somebody. They're so offended they wanted to kill the preacher. Now that's one way you can take it. You can get mad and walk away from it. Or you can do it like 
in verse 32 and verse 42. Verse 32 says, And they were astonished at his doctrine. Now this is Jesus. He's gone to another church. And at this church, it says, They were astonished at his doctrine. For his word was with power. Amen? Amen. Now these are people who want to hear God. These are people who want to hear the word of God. Not just so it could please them, make them feel good. They want to know the truth. They were astonished by his preaching. And in verse 42, And when it was day, he departed Jesus. When it was day, he departed and went into the desert place. And the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him that he should not depart from them. It's not the preacher or the teacher, but it was God's words they wanted to stay with them. They could feel the presence of God through the words. Because those are God's words, right? They could feel God's presence through His words. And what they wanted, they didn't want it to leave them. That's the way we should be. That's what the Word of God should do to us. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed. When you're hungry and thirsty for the Word of God, just like these people were, they didn't want the Word of God to depart from them. They were hungry and thirsty after righteousness, which is the Word of God. And the Lord says right here in Matthew 6, Blessed, blessed are you when you're like that. You want to get a blessing? Get hungry. Be thirsty for the Word. Amen? Real men of God who preach or teach, like I said before, will not be popular. In fact, they'll be hated. That's what the Bible says. They'll be hated. Because look at Jesus. They said, he was, they said Jesus was demon-possessed. Jesus. John 10, 20. And many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? This was Jesus they were talking about. Yeah. These kind of people are the people who want to take them and just and kill them if they could. To be a preacher or a teacher, you will not be popular. In fact, people will hate you. In Matthew 13, verses 55 through 58, talking about Jesus here. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James, Jose, and Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not with us, but not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, saved in his own country and his own house. And he did not many mighty works there before because of their unbelief. They were saying, Hey, this is a carpenter's son. Who is this, who is this man that's up there preaching? Who is he? Who, do this, who does he think he is? He's not a rabbi. He's not one of the religious leaders or Pharisee or whatever. He's just a carpenter's son. We know his family. Who is he? They were looking through their earthly eyes. Oh, we need someone who's, who's got a robe on. We need someone who's got a white collar on. Or we need someone who has a suit on. Who has degrees. Diplomas. But just a regular man? Ah. Uh-uh. We're not going to accept him. Luke 4.24 says the same thing. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. John 4.44 For Jesus himself testified that a prophet hath no honor in his own country. So men who preach the truth, who teach the truth, they have no honor in their own home, in their own country where they live. That's if they're like Jesus. And who was Jesus? The son of a carpenter. He didn't have no high titles, all kind of letters behind his name. He didn't have all that. Our religions will get you in a small group and teach why you believe what they believe, what they want you to know. Instead of just teaching the scriptures, they teach you what they believe. Jesus doesn't have different religions in his words. He doesn't say... One, one, one way you can take this way or you can take it that way. No. That's no. His words are not that way. So why do we have different religions? Why do we have different religions? Why? If this is the Bible and all the religions, true religions, get their truth from here, right? From the Bible. So why do we have so many different religions? They're all reading the same thing. We need to teach 
the scriptures by the Holy Spirit. Men of God need to teach the scriptures, period. That's it. Just teach the scriptures. Not to say, well, we believe this. Well, people nowadays, when they go up to a religion or whatever, whatever and say, we, we believe this, well, that person ought to say, well, I really don't want to know what you believe or y'all believe. I want to know what the Bible says. I don't want to know what the scriptures say. Some of these leaders are going to be like what it says in 2 Timothy 3, 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, for such turn away. These men will act religious, and because of that, when they look religious, act religious, speak religious, that makes them more dangerous. That makes them more dangerous. People who don't read the Bible, they're so easy. They're easy prey for these men. They deny the truth of God's word. These, what it says right here. And Timothy says to avoid these men. To avoid them. There's false teachers out there. Everything that I'm, I'm, that I'm going to be teaching on has to do with us studying the word of God so we can recognize these false religions and these false teachers. Also in Timothy it says some of these false teachings are in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 through 3. Now the Spirit expressly that in the latter days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, meaning deceptive spirits, and doctrines of devils. The Holy Spirit tells us not to be like Judas, who was an apostate believer. An apostate believer is someone who, like Judas. He followed the Lord, but he wasn't a Christian because he betrayed him. Christians don't betray your father. True Christians don't betray their father. So he was an apostate Christian. It says right here, not to be like them. But then they listened to the lies of the devil. They listened to the lies of the devil. Believe, Judas believed that Jesus, the devil was putting it on Judas that he was going to be this uh, warrior that was going to free the Jews from, from the Romans. Which that's going to happen, but it wasn't then. Just like Eve when she listened to the devil and believed him when he said, Oh, you won't surely die if you eat of the fruit. You're not going to die. We have people out there that say things like that today. They say it today. Different ways, but they say it today. Oh, that's not going to happen. You read it in the Word of God, and if it says it, and then someone comes up to you and say, Oh, that's not going to happen. You better run. Because this is the devil. Verse 2 Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience sneered, mean dead, with a hot iron. They're not telling you the truth under their costume. I'm going to call it a costume of Christianity. They look like Christians. They were the costume of Christianity. They no longer know good from evil because the devil has branded their conscience. That's what this verse is saying. They no longer know good from evil. Because the devil has branded their consciousness. Verse 3. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. The Lord is one who gave us marriage. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says not to eat meat. In fact, the Lord has told us to give thanks for our food. But you have people out there who say you shouldn't get married. And you shouldn't eat meat. Now, you know who you are. You know what church you belong to. Where, where preachers can't get married. They're supposed to be single. It doesn't say that in the Bible. In fact, the Bible says if you want to be a pastor or a preacher, you should be the husband of one wife. So where do they get that men should not be married? Meat. The Lord gave us meat. But you have people who go around, hey, you shouldn't be married. And you shouldn't eat meat. And what they're teaching is this is going to hinder you. If you do these things, you will not go to heaven. They, they're teaching these are things you have to do if you want salvation. Do you have religions out there that, that say to believe like they believe? To be like them? That's what they want. In Galatians, the scriptures tell us different. Paul says in Galatians chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, 
And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Paul was preaching to the word. Paul was preaching the word of God, and he went to the church to tell them, the leaders, what he was preaching, hoping they would agree with him on what he was teaching, and they did. They did agree with him. Now there was a lot of churches who didn't, but right here they did agree with him. Now we have religions today. If you don't believe like them, if you don't believe like them, you can't go there. See, if, if I don't believe you got to speak in tongues, if I don't believe that, well, then I can't go to a Pentecostal church. I'm talking about all churches. Every church has this. If you don't believe this way, then, you, you, then don't come here. Because this is the way we believe. Right here, right here it's saying, it didn't matter if Titus was a Greek. Titus. It didn't matter that he was Greek. He wasn't compelled to be like them, it says. So, if I go to a Pentecostal church and I say, I'm Baptist, well, they're not going to try to change me to being Pentecostal. Because right here, they didn't do that to Titus. Paul and Titus, Titus was a Greek. And it says they didn't compel him to be circumcised, to be like them. But we have churches today that are just like that. Oh, if you're not this way, then you can't come here. And like I said, men of God, men of God don't have to have the teachings of men like colleges and territories to teach. Because Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, and I'm going to read this out of the Living Bible. Are we beginning to praise ourselves again? Are we like others who need to bring you letters of recommendation? Or who ask you to write us such letters on their behalf? Surely not. The only letter of recommendation we need is you yourselves. Your lives are a letter written in our hearts. Everyone can read it and recognize our work, good work among you. Clearly you are a letter from Christ showing the results of our ministry among you. This letter is written not with pen and ink, but with the Spirit of the Living God, who is carved on who is carved not on tablets of stone, but on human hearts. So Paul's saying right here, I don't need a, a diploma. I don't need a certificate. I don't need anything that's in pen and ink on paper. He said, My class of where I've where I've been, people I've witnessed to, taught to, look where their hearts are at. Are their hearts right with the Lord? After me, after the Lord giving me the, the privilege and the power to go and witness to them, have they changed their life and given it to the Lord? He said, you want a letter of recommendation? Look at the hearts of men where I've been. That's what he's saying. First Corinthians one seventeen, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Wisdom of words. Not God's words. Wisdom of words. He's talking about college. Being taught in a school. Because we know he's not talking about the words of God. Paul says in Galatians chapter 1 verse 16 and 17. To reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathens. Immediately I conferred not with the flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went into Arabia and return again unto Damascus. When he got saved and was given the gift of teaching, this is Paul. He didn't go down and ask spiritual leaders for permission. Right here he's saying, he didn't go to the apostles before him. I have people who ask me, what gives me the right to teach or preach? Because I do both. I tell them, I'm just like Paul. I don't need man's permission. That's what Paul's saying. He said, I didn't go to the apostles before me to get permission from them. The Lord gave him permission. And that's, what I, that's how I do what I do. The Lord has given me the privilege, the opportunity to do what I'm doing. The Lord has. Jesus was just a carpenter. 
and he pre- and he preached nothing but the true word of God, mm-hmm. and they didn't accept him. If I get if I get permission from any man, if I get permission from an organization, then I need to teach or preach what they believe, because it's their it's their uh, belief. But when I'm independent from them, I can go strictly by the word of God. Okay, Lord, what do you want me to teach or preach? Most of the disciples, most of the disciples were just labor workmen, fishermen. That's that's what they were. They weren't priests. They weren't pastors. They were just ordinary people. And who put out the word? The disciples. The disciples that followed Jesus, they were not priests, pastors. They were just ordinary men. We don't need to sound like we're so smart because we went to college or whatever. Moses said in Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 through 11, And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, meaning a good speaker, neither heretofore, meaning never have been, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am a slow of speech and slow of tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Moses saying, Hey, I am not an eloquent speaker. I'm not a good speaker. He said, I never will be. I'm slow of speech. And God said, Hey, who made your mouth? I made your mouth. I will give you the words to say. You don't need to sound like no eloquent speaker. You just put out the words I give you, and that's all you need. That's all you need. You do not have to be an eloquent speaker, which we have too many of those in the church right now. They speak what they've learned in college, and most half the people are sleeping because they're using big words, and people don't even know what they're saying. You know, not, not everybody has a college education. So when they speak with these college language, it's just going over people's heads. They're not preaching in, or teaching in the Spirit. They're preaching and teaching about what, what they've learned from men and how to do it. Like I said before, I uh, had a, a preacher tell me, because I was thinking about being a pastor, I had a preacher tell me, well, you need to go to seminaries because they'll teach you when to get loud. Oh, my gosh. That right there told me, no, this is of men. No man's going to tell me when to get loud when I'm preaching or teaching. If I get loud, it's because the Spirit leads me. Period. That's it. And having a teacher is biblical. They don't have to have a certain doctrine. I'm a teacher, but I don't, I don't have no I have no doctrine. I'm not Baptist. I'm not Pentecostal. I'm not Catholic. I'm just a teacher. Okay, and we need teachers because it's biblical. Acts chapter eight, verse thirty and thirty-one. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. This was a man reading the words. He was reading the prophet Isaiah, and saith unto, unto thou what thou readest. He asked the man, "What are you reading?" In verse thirty-one. And when he said, he said, how can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So what he's saying here, how can I understand what I'm reading? And it's a a teacher guides me. So we need teachers. But believe me, when you when you're under a teacher, make sure this man is teaching you straight from the Bible, the words of God. That's why you still need to study yourself. Teacher doesn't mean you don't have to do anything. You have a teacher. The Lord, give, the Lord has given men gifts of teaching. So that means we need teachers. But that doesn't mean you don't have to read the Bible. Because there's false teachers out there. A church has a pastor, has elders, has deacons. And these men have been given gifts to do their ministries. They're not men to lord over us. You go into churches, and if this man's the pastor or a deacon or an elder, oh, he's up here. He's up here, and you're down here. Uh-uh. Being, having the title as pastor, elder, or deacon, that doesn't mean anything. They're servants of God, just like Jesus was a servant when he came down here to serve us. We're all equal. The Lord loves all of us the same. He didn't put those men there to lord over us. He put them there to help us. We're all on the same level. We're all children of God. No man is above another. These men who run the church of the Lord are given special abilities, gifts to do it. And they're led by the Holy Spirit. 
These are real men of God. But if you belong to the church and your pastor seems to be like he's up here and you're down here, already that's a bad sign. We have churches that want you to learn their way of believing, like I said before. You want to belong to that church? Okay, this is the way we believe. Just like the Baptists on Sunday morning, they all got the same quarterly, a Sunday school book. And all the teachers in all the Baptist churches are teaching out of that Sunday school book. Now, they're, these group of men or whoever writes these Sunday school books, they divide them out all through wherever, Texas, Louisiana, you know, to all the Baptists. And they tell them, okay, this is the Sunday school book. On this day, you will teach on this. Is that being led by the Holy Spirit? Well, we got too many teachers already that are teaching who, not, who should not be teachers. Now, what is the difference is what is what is the difference of doing that and what the Jehovah Jehovah Witness do? Jehovah Witness have leaders. They don't the, the layman, the bottom land, man. They can they said you cannot understand the Bible. We have to teach you what the Bible says. Well, it seems like the Baptists right here are doing the same thing. Oh, we got these books, and this is what you teach out of. They tell all the teachers this is what you teach out of. Now, in some, some Baptist churches, some, the teachers can teach what they want. But in most Baptist churches, in most, you better follow the Sunday school book. You better follow the lesson that has been given to you. Teachers are supposed to have the freedom to hear from God on what they teach from. That's what teachers are, men of God. That they should have the freedom to hear from the Holy Spirit and say, okay, this is what I want you to teach. And that's what they should teach on. Catholics. What's catechism? They take the young kids while they're young. And that's what catechism is. This is what they do. They teach the young kids, look, this is the way we believe. And they teach them the way the Catholics believe. Are y'all listening to me? Mm-hmm. Baptist, Catholic, and like I said, there's, there's other religions. I might not be saying your names, but you're in there. Because we all do it. They all do it. They teach their way. I'm not a Baptist. I'm not a Catholic. I'm not a Pentecostal. I'm a teacher who teaches the scriptures by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. That's what a teacher is. I'm sure through this teaching, I'm going to have people who are going to want to throw me off the hill. Because there's going to be things I'm going to be saying about, just like I'm doing now. Talking about the Catholics, talking about the Baptists, Pentecost. When you start talking about someone's religion... Well, right away, you get on their bad side. Or, they can be listening to the scriptures I'm reading to them and accept them and say, yeah, yeah, that's what I need to do. Not follow man-made religion, but follow the Word of God. Amen? I I said at the beginning, I'm here to please the Lord, not people. I'm just like Paul. It says in Acts 20, 27, it says, For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. So Paul's saying right here, I have not run away from teaching you everything that the Word of God has to say. As you know, we have preachers will not preach on certain topics. And most preachers will not preach on hell. Oh, that's negative. They won't preach on that. But right here Paul says, I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. And praise God, he's given me that kind of heart. Just like Paul. I'm going to teach the scriptures, period. Now you can be astonished by the words of God. And you want more. Or you can be like those other people who ran away from it. They wanted to kill Jesus. They wanted to run away from the truth. Now... Some of y'all know me. Know me more than the pastor or the te- uh, Sunday school teacher or whatever you're under. Are you going to believe someone you know or, or a stranger? I mean, if you had a choice, okay, well, I can believe this guy I don't even know who's teaching. Or I can believe this guy who I know. I've seen his walk with the Lord. I know him. Now, which one? who would you pick? <sighs> I give an example. I have a brother he reads books by other men, but he won't, he won't come to my Bible study. 
Here I am, his brother. He knows me. He knows where I was. He knows where I am now. He knows how the Lord has changed me. He knows my walk with the Lord. He knows how I study. But yet he chooses to read books of men he don't even know. Do you hear what I'm saying? If you're going to be under a teacher or a preacher, know something about that preacher or teacher. The cults, they've been here since the very beginning. This is not no new thing. The cults have been here from the very beginning. Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. Verse uh, Genesis 3, 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Now the Lord said, You will surely die. But who came along? The devil came along and said, Oh, you're not going to die. Cults want their own way. They don't want you to believe in the Lord. They want you to follow them. That's what cults are. To follow, do you hear me? To follow them. Not the Lord, not God, them. Now this teaching, this Bible study here, I don't want anybody to follow me. If you follow me, follow the Christian part of me. Because the Christian part of me will do you good. Because it's doing me good. Okay? But as far as, as, far as following me as I'm someone, I'm, I'm just like y'all. I'm a sinner. And you've heard this one. Many Christians say it. Oh, that was just for back then. That's not for today. I hate it when they say that. Because if it was that way, then we need a Bible to, to show us what was for back then and what's for today. Malachi 3.6 says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Who is the Lord? God is the Lord. And this is His words. And He says, I change not. What He said yesterday is for today. In fact, Hebrews 13.8 Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is His words. Not just Jesus the person, but Jesus God. His words is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But we seem to, if we don't like something that the scriptures say, we say, well, that was just for back then. If we, don't, if, we, we, if we don't want to accept it, oh, that was just for back then. It's a lie. That's why we need to read our Bible. So when someone tells us that, uh, no, the scriptures I read, the Lord doesn't change. And Jesus Christ said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the word, the Bible, is my Jesus, is my God. That's how I know him. Also, in Genesis chapter 10, we're going to see that Nimrod, who was in the blue line of Noah after the flood, he was, the first, he was like the first antichrist. He, he began his own kingdom. And we'll see in Genesis chapter 10, verses 8 through 10. And Crush begat Nimrod, which Nimrod means rebel. And Crush began Nimrod, and he began to be a mighty one in the earth. And he was mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it was said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Baal, which Baal means confusion. <clears throat> that was the beginning of his kingdom, which was in the land of Shinar. So we're going to see that Nimrod started his own kingdom. And then in the next chapter, chapter, uh, chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. And the whole earth was of one language and one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shonar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, this is Nimrod and his men, and they said, go to, let us, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Do y'all see it? Let us build a tower that will reach to heaven. Let us make a way to heaven. Make our own way to heaven. And let us make a name for ourselves instead of the name of God. So the, the uh, cults have been from way back here in Genesis. Ver, verse 5. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. 
And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they began to do. And now nothing will restrain from them which they have imagined to do. You have men who say that God was worried about men being like him. Okay, well you have men who say, well this is why God made different languages. Because remember it said everybody was of one language, one speech. And because they started to build this tower, this city. Not just a tower, this, a city also. And they started to build it. In, an, in their own name. Well, the Lord wasn't worried about them becoming like Him, becoming gods and doing their own thing. He wasn't worried about that. But it says that uh, their imaginations, that they would do their imaginations. And in Genesis 6, 5, it says what their imagination is. Genesis 6, 5 says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually so back here when he said their imaginations well this is what their imagination is also in Genesis 8 21 for the imagination of man's heart is evil from youth so we we were we were made to rebel okay that's in our nature it's in our nature to rebel I mean tell me if I'm wrong here but what's the first thing little kids learn the first word they learn no, mine. You know, those are the first words they learn. It's mine. That's mine. Or no. We, we were. That's when Adam and Eve became sinners. Now, when they have babies, we're sinners. So we do have a rebellious heart, and it takes the Lord to change that. It takes Him to change it. We have religions and cults that say deep down inside everyone has goodness in them. They just have to let it out. That's not what it says here. You have a lot of religions that that's the way, that's what they teach. That we all have goodness inside of us. We just need to learn how to bring that goodness out. Verse 7, to continue in Genesis. He, go to, let us go down. And this is God saying, let us go down. Let us go down. Who's he think, who do you think God's talking to? Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Remember, the three are one. Let us go down, because he made us in his image. God said, let's, let's make man in our, he said, our image. This is the Trinity. Mm -hmm. Some people might not want to believe that, but too bad. That's the word of God. Go. <laughs> <laughs> go to, let us go down, and there confound their languages, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build a city. Now remember in chapter 10, verses 9 through 10, they called Nimrod a mighty hunter. When, they called him, when, when he was called a mighty hunter, he wasn't talking about animals, hunting animals. He was talking about hunting men to build his kingdom. That's what he was talking about. Back in chapter 10 that I told you, Genesis 10, chapter 9, I mean verses 9 through 10, Calling him a mighty hunter, it was a, he was a hunter of men. He needed men to build his kingdom. The, Lord, the cults, cults want to cut themselves off from God completely. They want to make their own name. They want to make their own way. This has been from the very beginning. We're reading Genesis. So from the very beginning, this is what man has wanted to do. In verse 9, Therefore is the name of it, be, of it called Babel. Because the Lord did their confound the language of, of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of the earth, of all the earth. It's still the same today. We have men who want to make their own way, and we have men who want to make a name for themselves. And through this teaching, we're going to find out what to look for in cults. This is the way they did it back in Genesis, and this is the way they're still doing it today.